when Russia wins, the world will be for sure multiple. As our discussions today will focus on the convergence or perhaps clashes of civilizations, perhaps we could start with some current affairs uh, issues, the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict and its implications for the world order. Indeed, the overall reaction to the conflict reveals a lot about our world today. For instance, you find a very clear divide between the West and the rest, or the West and the non-West. The West has adopted very heavy sanctions uh, on Russia, and the non-Western world are overwhelmingly not in favor of sanctions. Virtually all large non-Western countries, China, India, Brazil, Pakistan, Mexico, Nigeria, and the whole Islamic world. In other words, most peoples in the world do not support the Western sanctions. And they believe the issue is much more complicated. And they place a lot of blame on the unwanted NATO aggressive expansion in Europe. Now even they want to expand into Asia. (laughs) We Asians would not allow this to happen. And uh, in other words, uh, the non-Western world may be divided on Russia's military action, but they are more or less united in favor of Russia's another objective. That is to transform this unipolar world order dominated by the United States and the Western interests into a multipolar world order. And they believe this is a really irreversible trend of history. Perhaps we can start with this issue of the divide between the the West and the non-West and the unipolar world versus the multipolar world. So Professor Dugin and Professor Akram, uh, what's your take on these issues? We will start with Professor Dugin, please. I agree with every word you, you have said, uh, Mr. Zhang Kuei-Wei. It is precisely, um, uh, you, you gave precise, the precise description of this transformation, of this transition, because this special military operation is a kind of screen. So before starting of this special military operation, we could freely guess either this multipolar world order is already established or not yet. So that was about guessing, about multi factor uh, balance of reality because some elements uh, were in favor of this transition as already uh, accomplished or uh, some elements were against that because the hegemony of the West is still very, very big and very, very, very critical. So the balance was unstable. And this military operation, special military operation in Ukraine, is a kind of test, a kind, a kind of proof whether we are already uh, living in the multipolar uh, world order or we are still in liberal global hegemony unipolarity. And Francis Fukuyama, you have mentioned already, uh, has said recently in his article, very, very correct uh, article, uh, the name was very eloquent, the Putin's war on liberal uh, world order. It is exactly what we have. That is Putin's war on liberal unipolar world order. So um, it is uh, uh, Russia affirms uh, herself and starting the special military operation as a, as a subject of a global system, not object, not just periphery of global hegemony, but as a pole in itself with its interest, with its values, with its uh, potential, military potential, political potential, 
So that is why the West is so radically against uh, Russia, because that will mean if Russia wins, or better, to put it better, when Russia wins, the world will be for sure multipolar. And that affects everybody, everybody, Europe, China in the first place, Islamic world, uh, India, Africa, Latin America, uh, everybody, everybody will receive a kind of legitimation to create and affirm their own uh, pole, their own sovereignty, geopolitical sovereignty, and not just uh, oh, this limited and hypocritical national sovereignty, because only who can afford direct confrontation with the really existing uh, sovereignty, full established sovereignty, and the liberal world order or hegemonic world order is precisely that. Uh, the, the West still insists that there's only one civilization, only one destiny, only one uh, universal patterns. Uh, everybody who wants to live should live exactly like the West uh, uh, says uh, us to live. And if we challenge that, we need to pass through the very, 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 very difficult test. And I am almost sure that uh, uh, after the, the victory of Russia, that will be unnecessary anymore for uh, other uh, other polls because Russia will show example how I I we should do that, and after that nobody will uh, will try. The West will will not try to repeat the same experience because if the West uh, decides to, for example, to attack, for example, China or Islamic. Uh, world, Russia will be with uh, this uh, uh, victim of, of this uh, uh, global order. And that will mean that the rest uh, or non-Western country are forming the camp, the field, geopolitical field of non-subordination to this liberal global order. That is about geopolitical revolution in any senses. That is the deep meaning of this special military operation in Ukraine? I think um, as far as the, uh, the uh, emergence of uh, blocks is concerned, uh, I saw uh, in my reading of world politics that the, uh, the blocks started emerging uh, um, a little bit before the Ukrainian war and uh, President Xi Jinping announced the BRI formally in 2015 but the idea for China existed much before that, that, that China one day will have to find alternative routes to avoid uh, a potential scenario at the Strait of Malacca in which, or in Taiwan Straits or Malacca Straits, when which West would conceivably block their path and bring them to their knees. So land-based connectivity was very much there uh, much earlier on in the Chinese thinking. Russia, on the other hand, had uh, under the uh, sagacious leader of President Vladimir Putin, uh, had aband started abandoning the bygone ideas of the Soviet days. The geography of the Soviet Union the social solidarity that it produced, the uh, Russian nationalism that was there, which is uh, it would be linked with the um, with its primordial identity of uh, Eastern Orthodox Christianity, was relinked again, and so Russia resuscitated all of those things, except for uh, uh, a bygone a philosophy of the bygone days, which it no longer believed in. So if you go back into the history, then you realize that, uh, that necessary changes were being made in the two continental, transcontinental giants of Eurasia, which is Russia and China. Then you have a large swaths of territory to the west of Asia, and these are countries of the Muslim world, but countries of the Muslim world. These countries, by and large, had 
uh, were part of, uh, you know, within the Cold War politics, part of uh, either the Soviet Union, Soviet sphere of politics, or they belong to the uh, Western sphere of politics. And after the Soviet implosion, then these countries also had, up until 9-11, um, for about more than a decade, uh, kind of realignments, which uh, Professor Fukuyama talked about back then, that it's the triumph of liberal capitalism and democratic cap capitalism, and this is the fine moment in history. Today, of course, I think it's much better that he has revised your position under influence of, uh, of thinkers like you. But now uh, there is a moment of soul searching in these Muslim countries. Now, so from, from the days of the Soviet implosion until 9-11, 9-11 saw bludgeoning into submission through acts of war, wars of aggression, fascist wars of aggression, in which a large collectivity of Muslims are killed through these wars, the wars that actually find no justification in history. So uh, that also pushed many of these countries away from the Western Bloc in towards the consolidation of this uh, a Eurasian integrated bloc. So there are two ways in which this integration is taking place. One is from inside these countries, which I just mentioned, China making its transition, Russia making its transition. Third, uh, it's from outside the, the atrocious Western policies of uh, bludgeoning these little countries into submission, having an opposite impact that these countries such as Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, uh, even increasingly Turkey, and eventually at some point in history it will, uh, I think, leave NATO, if not today, then tomorrow, uh, that these countries, uh, key countries of the Islamic world, which are strategically placed, are uh, seeing themselves uh, increasingly as a part of this block. The block is not only geographical, it is historical, it is geographical, but it is primarily ideological. Uh, by ideological, I mean philosophical also, because every people have identities. Everybody has an identity. And the type of threat to this identity comes from liberal ideas in which uh, you are uh, supposed to shed your backward form of human consciousness as found in tradition and religion and make a leap forward in a liberal domain in which there is no burden on you. Mm -hmm.